in public session. Um, I have a note in relation uh, to privilege, which I will read in a moment. Just before that, uh, to remind uh, members and those visiting, um, a request to ensure that dur during the meeting, mobile phones are turned off completely, or at least to the airplane or safe flight mode, depending on their device, um, as it causes interference with the recording system here in the House. I wish to draw your attention to the fact that by virtue of Section 1721 of the Defamation Act 2009, witnesses are protected by absolute privilege in respect of their evidence to this committee. However, if you're directed by the committee to cease giving evidence in relation to a particular matter, and you continue so to do, you're entitled thereafter only to a qualified privilege in respect of your evidence. You're directed that only evidence connected with the subject matter of these proceedings is to be given, and you're asked to respect the parliamentary practice to the, to the effect that, where possible, you should not criticise nor make charges against any person, persons or entity by name, or in such a way as to make him or her uh, identifiable. The opening statements submitted to the committee will be published on the committee website after the meeting. And members are reminded of the long-standing practice to the effect that they should not comment on, criticise or make charges against a person outside the House or in an official either by name or in such a way as to make him or her identifiable. I'd now like to welcome the County and City Management Association who would be making a brief presentation to us initially. Uh, their full submission has already been circulated to members and they're represented this afternoon by Mr. Eugene Cummins, uh, Chief Executive of the Council, uh, Mr. Dick Brady, Dublin City Council, Mr. Cahill Morgan, Dublin Region Homeless Executive, and Mr. Billy Coleman, South Dublin County Council. Um, so in the first instance, the way we intend to conduct proceedings this afternoon, um, if uh, Mr. Cummins, I understand, will make a brief presentation, I will then open the meeting up to the members to ask questions uh, to which you individually or collectively will answer and we will do them individually rather than banking the questions. So I'd ask members to be concise in their uh, questions and maybe we'll stick to five minutes each for the first question and then we can come back for additional questions to give everybody an opportunity. Uh, so Mr Cummins, if you'd like to make your opening statement, please. Okay, Chairman, uh, members of the Housing Homelessness Committee, I am pleased to be here this afternoon to assist the committee in its examination of the issues and challenges facing all of us in relation to housing and homelessness. I'm accompanied by my colleagues uh, Dick Brady, Assistant City Manager, Dublin City Council, Billy Coleman, Director of Services South Dublin, and Cahill Morgan, Director of Dublin Region Homeless Executive. The primary focus of local authorities is on social, economic and community development at local level, with social housing provision, social housing accommodation and homelessness having our absolute priority and full allocation of resources and efforts. Specifically in relation to housing, the local authorities are continually striving to match an increasing and diverse client profile with appropriate solutions. We are the planning authorities, the housing authorities, and we have a very important role in facilitating housing provision and development with the private sector and the approved housing bodies. I am conscious that the emphasis today is on how the, how the obstacles that are currently impeding progress on the issue can be surmounted and the specific actions that need to be taken to achieve urgent implementation of measures to address the problems involved. Let me make it clear that uh, the local authorities are dealing with the issues as a matter of urgency and with the attention that they undoubtedly deserve. And for the sake of context, I feel it is important to note the following. In 2010, there were 2,846 unfinished housing developments in the country. The number has now reduced to under 700, resulting in 2,178 completions. In the same year, there were 23,250 complete and vacant houses in the country. The number is now down to under 2,500 houses as a result of local authority intervention, which has resulted in a further 20,700 houses brought, being brought back into use. Local authorities acquired over 1,000 properties last year. Uh, a new streamlined process for delivering social housing units of under 2 million or 15 units in size has been approved, resulting in quicker turnaround time. And NAMA delivered 2,000 units for social housing by the end of last year. Since its introduction, the housing assistance payment has supported 8,000 households in the private rented sector across 19 local authorities 
with a target of 10,000 for this year. Increased rent supports on a case-by-case -case basis in HAP and rent supplement are now in place to reflect market conditions. And vacancy rates in social housing are down to as low as 1% in Dublin City. The first public-private partnership was announced in October of last year, and this will provide 500 homes across six sites in the Greater Dublin area. Rapid build housing, the first 22 units, are nearing completion, and there is a target of 500 to be delivered in the Dublin region by the end of next year. New tenant purchase scheme was introduced in January of this year, providing opportunities for tenants to become homeowners. The scheme is open to tenants, including joint tenants of local authority houses that are available for sale under the scheme and who have been in receipt of social housing support for a minimum period of one year and who have a minimum reckonable income of €15,000 per annum. An increasing number of local authorities have implemented a choice-based letting allocation system, empowering clients to have more options and say in the process. And funding for homeless services has increased by 32% since 2014, and the sleeping roof figures fell by 46% in Dublin between no November 2014 and November of last year. Also, there has been legislative and policy developments have been introduced to respond to the current crisis, and these include a reform part five of the, of the Planning and Development Act, changes in the private rented sector to limit rent reviews to every two years, and the introduction of, of free mediation. A vacant site levy will apply from 2019 and new national apartment planning guidelines have been introduced. The government has committed £10 million for an affordable rental scheme pilot in 2016, which works on the basis of tenants paying the majority of the rental costs from their own resources, with the state providing a subsidy to meet the shortfall. And it is aimed at keeping those on low to medium-sized incomes. Let's be clear, a multifaceted approach is required to tackle these complex issues. This needs a concerted effort and collaboration by all parties, including the political and regulatory system, the banking sector, the private rented sector, the construction industry, and all those delivering housing solutions, including local authorities. All of us need to understand that there are three key issues to be addressed, namely supply versus demand, affordability, and the need for developers to come back into the market. And uh, I, I will look at these one by one, Chairman. Supply versus demand. As there has been little or no development over many years, the rate of growth of demand exceeds the rate of increase in supply. The population growth figures continue to rise, forcing a higher demand for housing. And both social housing and private housing clients are competing for the same limited supply of units. We also have an imbalance with availability within the major cities under pressure as compared to other counties. And in terms of demand, all stakeholders need to examine how to help to get a mortgage, people to get a mortgage to buy or to rent a home. If we do not address affordability and accommodation, in particular supports for low-income families, the problem puts increased pressure on public housing and funding. And caution is needed in keeping buyers with mortgage repayments or renters with rent repayments, as it has only increases um, demand and tends to push up housing costs. The question of affordability. Many of those in employment are forced out of the market and into the private rented sector due to the lack of credit available for purchases and the lack of supply, thus driving up the price of units. The high cost of living is hampering individuals' ability to save, to purchase, and these issues need to be addressed. There is also an increased number of householders being displaced due to financial pressures, and this is a worrying trend. We need to make every aspect of housing provision more affordable, including the cost of land, the cost of construction, labour, financing, etc. We also need to revisit tax incentives and tax credits for affordable housing, and state investment in infrastructure for housing is required to reduce development contributions. And we also need to look at some of the additional costs um, of regulation. The financial services market have, no, have an obligation to be part of the solution and make credit available. Looking at the need for developers to come back into the market, we need to address the equity gap between banks' support of borrowing and developers' willingness and capability to provide the required equity. 
developers are protecting profit margins and balance sheet figures by not readily providing the required equity and therefore limiting the drawdown of credit. So the continued move to availability of credit is important. Like every other sector, sector in Irish society, developers suffered in the economic downturn and we need to create an environment where quality developers and builders have the opportunity to share their experience and skills in building sustainable and quality homes for our citizens. Chairman, I ask you and the members of the committee to also consider the issue of sustainable communities. This is where local authorities can plan accessible and well-serviced areas for all communities to thrive with easy accessibility to schools, community facilities, shopping centres and employment. All citizens are stakeholders in this. We all need to adopt a culture that respects our communities and we all have a role in contributing to providing and developing a good quality of life for our neighbours and ourselves. There are local difficulties with part, five, with part eights and there is no place in the mix for professional objectors who significantly frustrate local authorities and those engaged in the process of providing social housing. Changes in household composition, a trend towards smaller household size, means that the types of housing we will need will be different to the current stock. And I may I remind you of the serious challenges that all stakeholders must address as a matter of urgency. Homelessness is still an immediate priority, especially the growth in homeless families. And the February homeless figures are, show a total of 5,811 as being homeless. Um, and of those, 3,930 are adults and uh, 1,800 are children. Mortgage arrears. There are 62,000 mortgages on principal dwellings and 29,000 buy-to-let mortgages in arrears of over 90 days at the end of 2015. In addition, 121,000 principal dwelling mortgages were categorised as restructured. And there were also 5,200 local authority mortgages in arrears. Demand for housing continues to outstrip supply, particularly in the Dublin region. And of the 12,660 housing completions in of last year, a little over one-fifth were located in the four Dublin local authorities. The demand for housing in partic is particularly acute in Dublin, however, and it has been estimated that 60% of the additional housing are needed in Dublin alone. All local authorities will continue to work hard with the key stakeholders and those affected to overcome these challenges. We need practical support and solutions to enable us to continue this work. At this point in time, it is becoming increasingly difficult for local authorities to lease or rent properties, and the number of suitable buildings available for purchase by either local authorities or approved housing bodies is also reducing. The funding provided under the Social Housing Strategy 2020 is significant, and increasing rent caps would have a negative impact on an already stretched market. The immediate concern for local authorities is the supply and demand situation. And unless the private sector returns to building properties immediately, the problem, including homelessness, is going to get worse. Chairman, it would be remiss of me to conclude without putting on record the excellent relationship that exists between the Department of the Environment, Community and Local Government the approved housing bodies, the housing agency and the local authorities. But the absence of the private sector is a major concern for us all, as without them we will continue to see the problem worsen. Thank you, Chairman. Thank, thank you, Mr Cummins. Uh, before I go to the first person on the committee uh, to ask questions, I would remind uh, those both asking the questions and answering them uh, to try and keep the questions and answers as direct and as specific as possible rather than long statements. Uh, every member is afforded an opportunity for the first five minutes to direct their questions uh, to our visitors this afternoon and then there will be additional questions. But I would ask the questions and answers be kept directly to the point rather than long statements. Deputy Durkin, you have five minutes. You're first. Please. Thank you, Chairman. And I apologise in advance because I have to go to the House to chair the meeting the, the, the session there. Can I very quickly say thank you very much to our, to our uh, uh, guests for coming before us today and to ask them just a, a couple of questions. The return of the private sector to, to the construction area, how is the, what is the best way 
to encourage that. For example, are there builders available now that can be employed directly by the local authorities on contract to build local authority houses directly? That's the, the first question. And, and I emphasise direct build by the local authorities through the private building sector. And we've done this before on many occasions. To what extent do you think, no, from your own knowledge, uh, there are sites available, serviced or serviceable, within the areas that are most affected by the serious element of the housing shortage now? In other words, the homelessness and the, the impending homelessness, which is coming down the tracks as, 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 as uh, various uh, properties have been sold or repossessed or whatever the case may be. How long do you think it would take uh, to uh, start providing, for instance, modular housing? Uh, how long, what, what provisions are necessary? We have heard from time to time discussions about, about uh, procurement and the extent to which procurement uh, uh, provisions impede the ready and, and speedy uh, provision of housing. What, what needs to be changed, if anything needs to be changed, about procurement? How long do you think it, 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 you, you would re require in, again, your, the, the, the Greater Dublin area, the adjoining counties, or other counties throughout the country. How long do you think it would take, if the money was available tomorrow morning, which it is incidentally, uh, to, 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 to address the emergency side of, of the problem? How long do you think before it would be possible to have houses ready for people to move into? Because this is the crucial factor. Mr Cummins, or you well, or your yes, colleagues? Yes, Chairman. Well, I'll answer uh, some, some of the, the questions. And in the first instance, I want to stress that um, the solution to these problems will warrants a, work, a collaboration between all of the stakeholders, the AHBs, the local authorities and the private sector. And if the, private, if the local authorities were to build all the houses that we have planned to build, it will not solve the problem. We need the private sector involved. This is a huge solution and it's not just about uh, providing social housing in terms of building social housing, it's about having a suite of measures, options available to us in terms of purchasing, leasing, renting and, 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 and building. Just to be helpful from the committee's point of view, uh, the other sectors will be visited, I suppose specifically Deputy Durkett is talking to the role and responsibility of local authorities, builders and private build, building and all of that will be dealt with in other modules. So he's the chairman. Well in relation to the modular housing, I'll ask my colleague Dick Brady to, to respond to that. Now, a couple of things uh, before I get to that, just in relation to planning and, and the uh, sites ready. Uh, I suppose at this point in time there are uh, 22,000 units or 22,000, uh, what would you call it, uh, sites that have planning permission in the Dublin region. Uh, at the moment there's somewhere the order of 4,000 units under construction. Uh, and if you take applications and serviced, uh, zoned and serviced lands, the total amount of land or the total amount uh, available uh, would be somewhere in the order of 80,000. So to answer your question in relation to serviced land, the land is, the serviced land is available. So that's the, the first thing that I, that I would say. I suppose in relation to uh, modular units, uh, the first 22 units, uh, tenants or, or uh, families will be shown around there tomorrow. Uh, so we will start to see uh, occupation towards the end of this week, next week. So if you look at the time frame involved in that, uh, the government issues it, it you issued its instruction in relation to that sometime around October. Uh, and here we are uh, now in, in April and the units are, they have been uh, procured, built and ready for occupation. So you're talking, you know, in terms of... Uh, sort of 20 weeks or thereabouts or, you know, to, to push along with, with 22 units. Uh, we also have uh, 131 units uh, in train, so uh, we're working on the site development works have been uh, tendered in relation to those. Our first works have started in Finglas, uh, the leader today or tomorrow, because we had a little difficulty at the, at the start, but that, that's been resolved. So tomorrow they, they should be on site and we will move forward with the, with the, with the rest of them. So those units should be available uh, sometime in the autumn uh, for occupation. Um, a normal build of that sort of nature, you could be talking about two and a half years to three years from planning to, to, to build out. So 
There is a scope there within the rapid build to, uh, you know, get early, early, re early results. Um, again, uh, but look, procurement. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah. yeah. In, in, in relation to procurement, um, we are going to be different to Dublin City and, and the other authorities. The OGP, the office, um, that office are, are working on a framework, a national framework, uh, and the other local authorities will be operating from that. So there will be a procurement process, but from an already established um, framework that will be in place. And the work has started on that already. Be shortened to the chair. Uh, the, 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 the case being presented to me is that the, it takes a long time. Uh, can the process be shortened? Can I, can I add yes. that um, up until 2015, last year, we were, uh, in relation to uh, social housing units, we were actually purchasing them because of the huge uh, gloat of properties that were available in best value. So it wasn't until last year that that money was made available for actually going to construction. So we've been looking for approval. We've been, on, we've been planning uh, part eight, um, the whole procurement, tendering, going to tender. So the first tranche of houses, it'll be 2017. The procurement process is very, a very, very lengthy process. It's outside of our control. It's a statutory, regulatory uh, process, and it's outside of our control. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Deputy uh, uh, Canny. Sorry, Deputy Canny. Thank you. Thanks very much, gentlemen, for coming in. Uh, just uh, the first thing I want to, to make a comment on is on page one, um, Eugene, where you say there about a new stream, uh, streamlined process for delivering social houses up to 2 million or uh, 15 units uh, has been developed so that they can be uh, developed or delivered quicker. My understanding is that, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, that what that is is more or less a devolved grant where there's just one, um, the, the Department of Environment has just have to give one approval and off you go and do the work.